It's my sad duty to inform you all of an act of video game vandalism. Of a heinous act of destruction against a beautiful thing. Something that had, until its untimely downfall, been bringing joy and amusement to thousands across social media and among those of us who had become fully entrenched into the wonderful world of Spider-Man. I refer, of course, to the callous removal of the cube glitch and the venom glitch from Spider-Man 2. In hindsight, it's a crime we all should have seen coming. In our cruel and joyless world, games like Spider-Man 2 aren't allowed to have mistakes. Whether it's down to the endless sniping from soldiers on either side of the console war, calling out every single perceived sign of declining quality on the other side, or the modern day curse of always being able to patch out any minor issues games may face, glitches in this day and age are rarely given the chance to be loved, much less to become a part of the game's history and lore in their own right. Today, glitches get patches. But it was not always so. Back in the rose-tinted times of yesteryear, finding glitches and ways to break games in fun and interesting ways was practically a pastime in itself. And it wasn't to tear down the other side or try to have a pop at a game developer you didn't like. It was for the thrill of finding the mistakes, the blemishes, the imperfections left behind by the devs that proved these experiences really were made by fallible human hands. And yes, sometimes to exploit the hell out of it and make the games a lot easier to play, but mostly that first part. I suppose I should clarify, I'm not talking about game-breaking glitches that render games completely unplayable, or that make the game more of a chore to play. Even though the game corrupting itself under the weight of your breaks is sometimes warranted, you won't find me singing the praises of games that release half-baked and unfinished in the name of hitting a deadline. Not all glitches are born equal. But even in Spider-Man 2, this balance between harmless and game-breaking has to be walked. The recent removal of the Venom glitch that allowed players to wander around and even ride a bike around New York as Venom was incredibly popular and players flocked to perform it so they could get more time in the symbiote's shoes. Now it also had a nasty habit of corrupting your save, but if you go in knowing that's a risk and it's almost impossible to perform the glitch accidentally, did it really need patching out? There's a real art to the truly special glitch. An art in transforming what is objectively a mistake an unintended consequence of some unforeseen interaction in the game's code into something that people enjoy, remember, and even over time come to appreciate as part of the tapestry of the game itself. Take one of the most iconic and fondly remembered glitches in gaming history. Take Missing No. Now, players of a certain vintage, like myself, will remember the mystique that surrounded Missing No and its item duplication powers back in Pokemon Red and Blue. Beautiful in its simplicity, you could encounter Missing No by pulling off the old man glitch, essentially by talking to certain NPCs in a particular order and fly into certain spots before triggering encounters, players could cause a memory overflow bug that would make the game generate a glitched Pokemon. And usually, if you did it right, you'd be able to get a ridiculous number of Master Balls or Rare Candies. Take that, Sylphco. Now, it also bricked your game, made the Hall of Fame feature bug out to hell, and if you caught Missing No, you'd create all kinds of issues for yourself. But man, it was fun to break the game. Game Freak patched Missing Now out for good in Pokemon Yellow, a brazen act of cruelty against a monster of their own creation, a sign of the terrible treatment to come for all glitches. But left to its own devices, Missing No became a phenomenon of its own, fueling playground discussions of what it was, why it was in the game, what it was for. It brought joy to players who discovered it. And can we honestly say it would survive a patch if Missing No was suddenly discovered in Scarlet and Violet today? Or would they simply point at the Missing No glitch as a sign of declining quality? Now perhaps I could be accused of comparing 8-bit apples with photorealistic oranges here. The truth of it is, the modern day glitch is a different animal to the old school glitch. As we've moved out of the realms of rudimentary video game programming, being done in basements by teams of five overworked, underpaid devs, and into the world of AAA development, done in fancy office blocks by teams of hundreds of overworked and underpaid devs, glitches have evolved as well. Against all odds, there are still some examples of what you might call modern day glitches surviving the chopping block and cutting through to become memes in their own right. Take Skyrim, for example. Now, it would take years to go through every bug, glitch and exploit that just works in Bethesda's favourite cash cow, but one that sticks in the mind of almost everyone who experienced it was the giant launch glitch. It's understandable, being propelled several hundred feet into the air by the rough end of a giant's club isn't something you're likely to forget easily. Bethesda never officially commented on it, and it's still a fairly common sight to watch giants, mammoths, and other big creatures just sail weightlessly off into the Skyrim sunset. Or be cannon to the moon yourself. Alas, we knew not what we had. And so we arrive with a crash into the present day. I started writing this script because I couldn't quite wrap my head around why Insomniac, in all their knowledge and wisdom, who had successfully built one of the most successful superhero game series of all time, couldn't seem to let their game have a generally harmless but hilarious bug survive a patch. It's one of the problems, I suppose, with the idea in the present day gaming industry 
that no game is ever truly finished. Fixing stuff post-release has become the new norm, and even games that launch in what would in any other medium be described as a finished state, the temptation for devs to continuously tinker with their creation, like an artist who's just noticed a fingerprint in the paint, is too much for them to handle. The Spider Cube glitch had begun to do what Missing No did all the way back in the 1990s, becoming a part of the community around the game. Fan art started a pop up of Spider Cube swinging through New York, lore theories began to be crafted. Where did Spider Cube come from? Was it a piece of tofu that was bitten by a radioactive spider? Or a spider that had bitten a piece of radioactive tofu? We will never know. Because almost as soon as it was pointed out that the problem existed, it was squashed before it could grow. And I say this as someone who is all too aware that they are part of the problem. The game's media have their own cross to bear in this particular battle. Quick to jump on any perceived issue with the games we cover, we are on occasion guilty of encouraging those who would shout loudest about glitches. Those who stand across from games they dislike and use glitches and bugs as a way to tear them down. But Spider Cube wasn't that. It was an easy bug for players to fix themselves once it had been activated. It was, for the most part, harmless, in that it had no lasting consequences on your game state. It was, for all intents and purposes, fun. It's not even like there was anything really to be gained from activating the glitch. Unlike Missing No all those years ago, there's no item duplication, no exploit to an easier ride. I find myself drawn back to the debate around Tears of the Kingdom, when you couldn't move for players discovering uniquely ingenious and ever more ridiculous ways to make the game duplicate items that ultimately didn't really break the game, they just made it easier for players to make bank on their rupees and not have to worry about having no weapons. But those got patched out too, another victim of the constant need to remove mistakes, no matter how small. And so here we are, in a timeline sadly devoid of Spider Cube, and what makes it worse is that Insomniac themselves stared into the meme one more time, giving the little cube the dignity of a proper social media send-off. Most glitches don't even get that. I'm not sure what the solution is, or if this is even a real problem for most players. Let's face it, the majority of us would like to see our games run smoothly for the most part, but is it really too much to ask that everyone in the gaming community, from the devs to the players, lighten up a bit on glitches? Not all glitches are born equal, and sometimes it's the imperfections that make the art truly special. Thanks for watching! Are there any glitches that are close to your heart? And while we've got your attention here at GG Recon, if you want more stuff like this, check out these videos here.